I hand her the note, and then she says, I can't go out with you. I says, you better read the note. She, she thought you were asking for a date. A asking yeah. for a date, yeah. Not very picky, are you? I'm flattered, but Mary. <laughs> what did the note say? I says, I have a, a briefcase full of dynamite, explosives. And if I don't get what I want, I'll blow the plane up. And how did she react? She says, oh my God, she just ran right up there as fast as she could, not run, but briskly went up there. Up to the cockpit? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, that's when I had trouble with Lawrence uh, Feingold. One of the things that, that I found interesting um, as Rodney was filling in the details of the incident was an interaction with a young attorney out of Seattle named Feingold. Started coming back at me and I came right up to him and says, you better sit down. Shut up, no funny stuff. He goes, what is this? I says, your true pay is not, you're not straight on your head. I acted like a little bit crazy, but. I would sit down and I would straighten out that fucking toupee if I were you. No funny stuff. Rodney told him to, you know, sit down and that his hairpiece was slightly ajar, which it, it, it appears that maybe he was wearing a hairpiece. So to me, I thought that was a very, very specific detail. And later, turns out that Feingold acknowledged his interaction with Rodney. My 25th anniversary, I called him on the phone in Seattle and said, I'm D.B. Cooper. And he goes, okay, if you're D.B. Cooper, tell me what, what I want to hear. I said, what do you want to hear? He goes, you know what you told me. I said, I told him the same thing. He says, oh my God, you're still alive. 